Okay, so this is the second video in Module 4. Here we're going to be focusing on concentration units. Now this should be somewhat of a review from 111. We're going to be focusing on uh, molarity, molality, mole fraction, um, mass percent, and ppm. Hopefully you've seen those in 111, so this should be more of a review than uh, most videos, but we're going to make sure. So this is where we're going to be for the most part here. Um, I do have a little bit to say about PPM, but it's going to be uh, brief here. So we're going to be talking first about molarity, then molality, mole fraction, mass percent, and parts per million. Now concentration is just the amount of substance per volume. It can be moles, it can be grams, it can be milligrams. It doesn't really matter. It's just the amount per some volume. And so we have to really consider uh, both solute and solvent in our solution here because that's how we determine how much of our reagents are really here. Similarity is def defined in terms of molar amounts of solute, so moles of solute per liter of solution. Now this just means the total volume here. It is not going to be the volume of water added or anything. It is the total volume of the entire solution. We really like molarity. We tend to use molarity a lot. It has to do with the fact that molarity is convenient, but there is a problem with molarity and that is it is dependent on volume and volume will adjust with temperature. So if you increase temperature, you know, your the molecules will move and sit differently. If you decrease temperature, they move and sit differently. So this is a temperature dependent concentration. Now it may be slight, you know, by 0.01 or something, but it does matter. So let's go ahead and use some practice. Even though we prefer other units, we do typically use molarity a lot because it is convenient, it's fast. So here we have 1.5 moles of sugar and 225 milliliters of solution. Calculate the units in terms of molarity. Molarity is that capital M, which is moles per liter. We are given moles. We have this. So we can go ahead and plug in the 1.50. We don't have liters, so we have to go from milliliters to liters. We're given 225.0 milliliters. There's a thousand milliliters in one liter. It gives us 0 0.2250 liters. Make sure you don't forget that zero. It is significant. It does matter. So now we can plug it into our calculation. Now we have our moles per liter. And so if we enter 1.50, divided by 200, uh, 0.2250, you end up getting 6.66667 molar or moles per liter. In terms of sig figs, this one has three, this one has four, so we're going to round to 6.67 molar. If we had sugar, uh, the molar concentration, we can also convert from uh, moles to volume here, I'm sorry. So here we're given what volume of this solution do you have need to have to have this many moles of sugar. So we're going to go from, I don't even know what I just hit, go away. We're going to go from moles of sugar to liters of solution. And we can do that using molarity, which is given. This is a one-step process. I don't know why. There we go. So this is telling us 1.50 moles is, is equal to 1 liter. So we have one step. We're going to start with the given 1.50 moles. We know according to, oh, this is 5 moles. Um, if we know that we have a 5 molar solution, there's 5.0 moles every time we have 1 liter. 
So in your calculator, you have 1.50 divided by 5.0, and you end up getting, your calculator spits out 0 0.3, but you should know you need more sig figs than that. Um, this is going to be moles cancels. Now we're left with liters. Sig figs. This has got three. This has two. So we should round this to two sig figs or 0 0.30 liters. Now, if we had solutions of NaOH and magnesium chloride, if we dissolved 50, 50 grams of each into 500 milliliters of solution, calculate the concentration of each in terms of molarity. Well, here we need the periodic table. Because of my, my um, screen size, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to give it to us. Um, for me, I always calculate molar mass using um, my table, atom, number, mass, and total. So I'm just going to focus on NaCl first. NaOH, NaOH. So here, sodium, oxygen, and hydrogen. I have one of each. The mass of sodium is 22.99. Mass of oxygen is 16.00 and hydrogen is 1.01. .01. That gives us 22.99 plus 16.00 plus 1.01, .01, which if you add these all together, you get a nice even 40.00 grams per mole. Now, um, we, have, we are given grams, so we can get to moles using molar mass. We're given milliliters. So we can get to liters because we know there's a thousand milliliters in a liter. Once we have that, we can set it up to put moles over liters to get our molarity. Okay? So let's do this here. We know we're putting 50 grams in, 50.0 of NaOH. If I was a good girl, I would write all my units. And every time we have 40.00 grams, we have one mole of NaOH. So if we divide 50.0 divided by 40.00, you end up getting 1.25 moles of NaOH. Now, in terms of milliliters to liters, we have 500.0 milliliters. There's 1,000 milliliters in one liter, which gives us 0 0.5 zero 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 liters. So now we have moles, we have our liters. We can go ahead and plug in 1.25 moles over 0 0.5 zero 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 liters. And if you have, um, when you enter this, let's go ahead and consider our sig figs here. This has got three, this has got four. Our answer should have three. So this should be 2.50 molar NaOH. Oops, I'm not done. Now let's go back and do the same thing for magnesium chloride. I'm going to change my colors. We do have the, the volume. We need to get the molar mass of magnesium chloride. So atom, number, mass, and total. Here we just have Mg and Cl. One and two. Molar mass of this is 24.30, 35.45, gives us 24.30 plus 70.90, um, 24.30 plus 70.90 gives us 90, I wish I knew how I could do that, like it just... 95.20 grams per mole. Okay, so now we have our molar mass. We know how many grams we're putting in. So we're going to do 50.0 grams. Same thing as up here. We're going to now cancel grams because we know that there's 95.20 grams in one mole of MgCl2. Come on. 
So 50.0 divided by 95.20 gives us 0 0.525 moles of MgCl2. Now once again, we're going to go back and pit moles over liters here, which for this is going to give us 0 0.525 moles MgCl2 per 1 0 0.5000 liters. That is going to give us 1. Point, this has got three sig figs, this has four. We want three significant figures in our answer. So this is going to be 1.05 molar MgCl2. Come on. All right, let me, you know what it is, is I rotated my screen. All right, we're going to hit pause and rotate so that I'm not hitting that button. So this is um, the big thing is make sure you've got your significant figures, your units, and all of that. Let's hit pause so that I don't keep doing this. Okay, hopefully that'll be a little bit better. Come on, there we go. Okay, so now let's go to the next unit, which is molality. Molality is not temperature dependent because here we've got uh, the moles of solute per kilogram of solvent. So it's amount per, you know, vol for, per mass. Mass does not change with uh, temperature. So this is a better unit to actually use. Um, and you'll use this in the colligative properties lab quite a bit. So notice that this is kilograms of solvent, not kilograms of solution. It is only dependent on the solvent portion. A solution of sulfuric acid was made by dissolving 12 grams of H2SO4 and 250 milliliters of water. Calculate the molarity, oh, I'm sorry, calculate the molality of H2SO4 and assume a density of one for water. Well, we have molality, which is moles of solute per kilograms of water. And so we need to kind of get to those units. Now we're given grams. We have to get to moles. The way we can do that is through molar mass. So we have to actually find our molar mass. So let's go ahead and do that. Atom, number, mass, and total. Same thing, I'm not going to pull up my periodic table here, I'm just going to go ahead and um, write it out. So this H2SO4, we have hydrogen, sulfur, and oxygen, 2, 1, and 4. Molar mass of hydrogen is 1.01. .01. The molar mass of um, sulfur is 32.06 and the molar mass of oxygen is 16, which is going to give us a total of 2.02 plus 32.06 plus 64, or overall 98.08 grams per mole. Okay, so we have our molar mass. We also have milliliters. We need to get that to kilograms. So we're going to go from milliliters to grams using density. And from grams, we can get to kilograms. So up here, we have 12 point, I need more room. 12.00 grams of H2SO4. We know every time we have 98.08 grams, we have one mole of H2SO4. 12 divided by 98.08, 12.00 divided by 98.08 is going to be 0 0.1, four sig figs, four sig figs, it needs four sig figs, 0 0.1223 moles. Now, down here, we're starting with 250 milliliters of water. There's one milliliter and one gram. 
one gram per one milliliter. And then there's a thousand grams in one kilogram. So that's going to give us 0 0.250 kilograms. So we have um, four sig figs exact. So actually this should have another decimal place. So now we have moles, we have our kilograms, we can plug it in and we get 0 0.1223 moles of H2SO4 per 0 0.2500 kilograms of water or solvent. Wow, how did I even do that? So we're going to take 0.1223 and we're going to divide it by 0 0.2500 and you end up getting 0 0.4892 molal H2SO4. Kind of like that. Mole fraction takes into account the amount of moles of every substance. So you take the moles of the substance you're looking at divided by the total moles, so the moles of solvent plus solute. And it's just a fraction. It's going to be a decimal um, number here. You're not going to multiply by anything. It's just a fraction. So here we have a solution of sulfuric acid that was made by taking 12 grams of H2SO4 and putting it into 250 milliliters of water. Well, we did this a second ago. We did grams to moles. To moles. And a second ago, we got 0 0.1223 moles of H2SO4. Now, I'm not going to redo that calculation, but let's focus on the water here. To get to moles, we need to get milliliters to grams, and then we have to go from grams to moles. And so we're going to go ahead and do that. We know that we have 250, actually, I don't know if you guys know the atomic mass of water. So atom, number, mass, and total. We need molar mass here to get from grams to moles. H and O, there's two hydrogens in water, one oxygen. This is 1.01, 16.00. So we have 2.02 .02 and 16. Or the atomic mass of water is 18.02 grams per mole. Now, down here we have two arrows, so we're going to need two columns. 250 milliliters. There's one milliliter and one gram because that was given. And then every time we have 18.02 grams, we have one mole of water. And so if we multiply across 250 times one times one, divided by one and divided by 18.02, you end up getting something like 13 point, four sig figs, four sig figs, 13.87 moles of water. Now, mole fraction is the moles of the substance we care about. For us, that's going to be H2SO4 plus the to moles to over the moles total. So moles of H2SO4 plus the moles of water. Now watch this in your calculator guys because if you say moles of H2SO4 divided by this plus that without parentheses your calculator is not going to give you the right answer. You have to be sure you are specifying order of operations here. Be smarter than your calculator. So our moles of H2SO4 is 0.1223 Oops. over zero, I have no idea, 0 0.1223 plus the 13.87. And so if I enter this in my calculator, it's going to be 0 0.1223 divided by parentheses 0 0.1223 plus 13.87, close my parentheses, you end up getting 0 
0.087405 or 8.741. Actually, this goes to two sig figs, so that would limit this to three. One, two, three, four. Nope, that would be right. That would be right. Times 10 to the negative three. And that would be how you calculate that. So mass percent is the solute, the mass of the solute over the total mass of the solution multiplied by 100. That's relatively easy to do. Um, we have our grams of sulfuric acid, our grams, because this is one to one, grams of water and sulfuric acid. So we're going to take the grams over the total grams times 100 over grams H2SO4 plus grams of water. Guys, I can't tell you the number of people that assume they can get this right and never calculate it and then just get it wrong on the test because of parentheses and other things. So here we're going to have 12.00 grams over 250.0 grams and 12.00 grams times 100. So this gives us 12.00 divided by parentheses 250.0 plus 12.00 times 100. It ends up being 4... four Yep, still going to be four six fixed. Four point five eight zero percent H two S O four. Now, the only other one I really want to talk to you about is parts per million, and that has to do with the because it's the way that they typically present your water quality report, and you're you're required by law to get a water quality report every year. Although I discovered something very disturbing this year. Just because they have to report it every year does not mean they have to test it every year. And so if you read the fine print in a lot of locations, it'll say, oh, it was tested in 2013 or it was tested in 2014. And I'm sorry, that was a long time ago. How do you know what the contamination is now? And if you read the news, there's a lot of places that are having major water contamination issues. Not just the big ones, but lots of locations are having issues. Um, so it may, it, it's good to understand. So parts per million is the individual solute components per one million solvent components. Usually it's going to be reported as milligrams per liter, um, but it could. It, it, it is also abbreviated PPM. Uh, sometimes they'll actually tell you it's milligrams, but really it's just ppm. So the current EPA standards for drinking water is uh, for for drinking water is to contain 10 ppm's or less of arsenic. How much arsenic could be in a gallon of water that is being sold, or from the city? Period. I mean, you're paying for it whether it's out of the tap or not. It's, you just don't know it unless you're on well water. So arsenic is um, pretty toxic. So here we've got our liters. We're going from ppm, and we want to get to, actually, I don't specify, but let's go with milligrams. ppm is a... Uh, Sorry, guys. Um, stop. Tight, no, tighten. Um, we're going to start with the volume, the 3.79 liters. And so to go between liters and milligrams, we're going to use our ppm because this is milligrams in a liter. So here we've got 3.79 liters. We know according to this, every time we have, this is remember milligrams per liter, every time we have one liter, we can have 10 milligrams of arsenic, okay? So if we multiply across, uh, that is going to give us 
3.79 times 10, which is 37.9 milligrams. Um, it ends up being not very much, but if you look at it in terms of what this does, it is, um, that's, that's a big amount. I mean, that, that's a pretty large amount. So, you know, um, it's good to know. We could convert it to moles at two if we wanted to, but I didn't specify here. I just want you to see how this works so that when you do get your water quality report, you know how to interpret it. Uh, I'd like to put some of them on here, but I don't know if I have permission. So, copyrights. Anyway, this is how you calculate your uh, concentration for this unit. It's going to be really handy as we get into colligative properties and things.